The coronavirus is the biggest threat this country has faced for decades. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Finn. I work at Musgrove Park Hospital on Blake Ward as a healthcare assistant. So I've been doing my job role as a healthcare assistant for about a year now. It's taking care of patients emotionally. So I try and make their stay in hospital less stressful and make them feel more comfortable. So assisting them with eating if they have trouble eating. I work predominantly on Blake Ward, which is a head and neck unit. So we deal with patients that have airway issues, so tracheostomies. They breathe through like a hole in their neck and I'm trained to help clean and maintain that while you've got one. And some have them permanently, some are temporary. So with my qualification as an apprentice, so I'm doing level three health and social care qualification alongside my work in the hospital. And with learning, that's the best way for me to be and doing it hands-on working and writing about what I learn, which definitely helps me. So I actually started February last year. So I did experience being in my job pre-COVID and post-COVID. We weren't wearing masks at work when I first started because from the information that we were told, we thought it would really just blow over, but a year's gone now. And with the training that I received and the people who trained me to do my job, they were amazing. When it first became more serious, I received a letter to SHIELD for a healthcare condition that I've got. It did bring me to tears because I loved, loved my job. You know, um, it, it was a big part of my life and I shielded for three months. And the amount of anxiety about what was going on, I was informed previously before I received a letter that my condition shouldn't affect me. However, when receiving that letter, it all sort of changed. I had a big decision to make. It was either stay at home or go back to work, which if you could probably hear in my voice, it was, it was quite a, a difficult decision because it felt that I was letting people down, even though it was to protect me. So I did isolate for three months, uh, which was lonely, definitely was lonely not being able to see my girlfriend who I couldn't see for those three months um, and I went back to work after three months because my mental health became I felt that I was so low that the risk of me being at home was actually more dangerous than me being at work so I went back to work with the team that I had they really did show me the ropes again and really integrated me back in really well and I felt like I was really supported by my team and that's how I feel feel now My name's Karen Leaf and I work for Young Somerset and I'm actually Head of Service for the Mental Health Support Teams which is about helping children, young people and families access early mental health support through the school system. I've been working for Young Somerset coming up two years. I've always worked for County Council before that in support roles and youth work roles and stuff. I'm very passionate about it because I come from a background, team leader in Team 4 which was trying to keep young people out of the care system and keep families together, help them break out of those sort of unhealthy patterns that a lot of them were in or things that they were stuck in. So for me, it's really important to get in early because the earlier we get in, the more we can have, I think, greater impact. You know, talking, particularly for young boys, talking about things, it's okay, it's not a weakness, it's actually a strength to be able to talk about your feelings and get support and help. I think 
probably like for many people it was just a shock it was we were all a bit like oh my god what are we going to do so you know we all had to work from home like adapt to that like for lots of people what we did do in young somerset was really adapt quickly because we're a, an organization that is quite fairly small uh, we were able to adapt and flex quite quickly to make sure all our services were available online digitally but actually as the lockdown went on and people realized this is going to be an ongoing thing and it's not going to go away quickly people did then come back or say you know yes i would like a service please What we've obviously tried to do is support people and understand that it is tricky for everybody. But definitely there's been some raised anxiety, I think, you know, around the pandemic and, and the outcomes and when's it going to finish and, you know, not being able to see family and friends and worry about getting the virus. And I know the big thing now for young people and for families is because they've spent so much time not socialising, they're quite scared of going back into, like, some sense of normality. But some of the referrals that have come in for school anxiety were actually not there at all and though some of those young people didn't want to engage because they weren't at school and so they weren't feeling anxious. It does highlight about school anxiety that some children and young people do really struggle within their system and I think for me it's one of the things how can we help making that a better experience for those young people that are quite anxious and struggle within that big system. My name is Deborah Payne. I'm a Year 5 class teacher at Bishop's Hull Primary School. I live in Taunton, Somerset. I'm a class teacher for Year 5 age group because I've always liked children and they're really great to work with because they're all different and they look at the world with such fresh eyes and they ask the best questions. It's been a very rewarding job where I feel I've sort of at times made a difference and just seeing children enjoying their learning, getting absorbed and actually seeing them having that moment of triumph is so rewarding. It's the best reward I think a teacher can have. In my naivety, I can remember saying to some of my class, oh, I expect we'll all be back after Easter. I just, you know, like everybody else, didn't have a clue what was coming. It was scary at first because it was totally, it was the unknown, wasn't it? Nobody knew what was going on really. And you just worried for people. I worried for the children, worried for my own family. My main priority and the head's main priority was just to make sure everybody was safe and to try and create normality in what was a really weird world. The second lockdown was hardest and there were times I just thought, oh, I can't do this anymore, I'm so tired, I've had enough. And you're trying to keep everybody happy and cause everybody was struggling, I think. Probably like everybody else, it was a very weird time and stressful and tiring, a lot of anxiety, but there were some highlights the good news stories out there. You know, there was the Captain Tom Moore stories. And I think we're very fortunate where we live because 100 metres from my house and I'm out across the fields, I could take walks. I used to feel dreadfully sorry for people in cities in high rises. You know, I just thought, gosh, it must be hell really for them. So I felt a lot fortunate in a lot of ways. I'm Rebecca Powell. I'm the Member of Parliament for Taunton Dean and I'm also the Environment Minister. 
I have the job of looking after and working for all my constituents, and that's almost 82,000 people in Taunton, Wellington, right out to Wibberliscombe and a big rural hinterland around. Then I also have my role as the Environment Minister in the Department for the Environment, Food, Farming, Rural Affairs. So it's a pretty full on life. I worked in communications, media, a whole range of activities, and I run my own small business in that space. But I also do have a, a deep interest in environmental issues and a passion specialising in that as a journalist and a broadcaster. Uh, I thought, well, maybe here is the opportunity if I get there to represent Taunton, but also to get into the environmental space. Uh, and that's what I then subsequently did. So when I went to Parliament, I focused very particularly on those areas. And then lo and behold, Boris, Prime Minister, made me his Environment Minister. So I'm really like the cat that caught the green. But what I would say is we have worked so hard in Somerset to get the vaccine rolled out. People have really pulled together to do that. We've taken all of the evidence and all of the advice in terms of the vaccines being offered. But why it's so critical, particularly for a county like Somerset, is that we have a very elderly population and those are the vulnerable ones. So we have to do something to protect them, no matter whatever disease it's for, if people don't partake in it to the right level. We can't get out there and have a free life if we don't have this vaccination programme. And so we have to follow the science, which we've done absolutely from the beginning and give people confidence that, you know, these vaccines are safe. I was really impressed by what a lot of the schools told me and the head teachers and a range of teachers I met about the systems they put in place to look after children when they're at home. Because actually uh, there has been a real concern about the children being at home all the time. So in a way, getting our children back into the school space where we can see them and we can look after them. The government is so mindful of the health and well-being of our students that we've actually allocated funding for a well-being and a mental health to get them through this very unusual period that they have faced. Well, I've liaised very closely with uh, teachers in the constituency across all of the sectors, nursery, primary, secondary and the colleges. And yes, it's been really challenging for them having to get the students back to school. But my information in talking to them is that they're very pleased to get the students back and they are wearing masks and the hand washing in particular is, is really being adhered to. And I think that's genuinely really important and, and also what I would say about real issues they can't work around you know contact me and I will speak to them and liaise with the education department see if there's anything else they need that we could do to help. Thank you to absolutely everybody. Everybody's played their part, even if you think you haven't. If you've been the person who has adhered to all the rules and stayed at home, and I know that's been hard, you have really helped. Uh, and I particularly want to thank the people in this area because they have really been brilliant about adhering to the guidance. And it's been tough. It's been so tough. People who can't see their grandchildren. I've got people in my own village dying to see their grandchildren, but now they can start to do that. So look, there is light on the horizon. And although this was tough, some good will come out of it. We're learning so many lessons. We've got to look at this as a brave new future. And with my environmental hat on, I hope it's made us realise how valuable the environment is to us, how we need it to deliver our healthy food. We have to look after this place. And I do honestly think we will grow back better, stronger, and I hope greener.